Let me bring in Ben Ingram. Hello, lover. Mark Bowman. Leroy here. One, two, one, two, three. Chris Domino. Check, check. What am I, a moron? And Kelly Kroll. Hi, guys. <laughs> Live at ASW Hi, Distillery. Everyone. How are y'all? <laughs> <laughs> What, what is live and what is it right now? Are we is, on? I don't know. Is there gonna Can be you a, see us? Is there a battle for mic time over the next hour? How is this going to work? It's going to be a, it's gonna be like WrestleMania. Oh, what a drop. Please lose that drop ASAP. Who, I don't uh, know who's back right now. Kelly, are, are, you, are you running point on this? Uh, oh, I'm going to let Ben earn the money tonight. Matt, I think I'm running point for about the first 20 seconds ah. of the show. <laughs> and then hell breaks loose? Yeah, and then, and then it's just, you know, four people that are begging for the ball so they can score. So Westbrook time. Like <laughs> isolation. <laughs> Bowman's going isolation. I like it. You Clear gonna... out. <laughs> Build a community tonight. I'm going to miss everything I shoot. <laughs> I'm very excited to hear the show. And, and let me remind folks, you can hear it on the fan. Come up to ASW Distillery and watch it. See it on the 680 The Fan YouTube a channel or listen on the fan app. It does bother me, and I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around Philly's Astros on Friday night because I have no side to pull for. I can't even pull against one side. I just pull for Dusty. I told you, I'm not pulling for Dusty. I can't root for either one of those teams. I have a major problem. So help me out, Ben. What should I do? I, I don't know. This is kind of the dilemma that I've been in. I, I don't see how we can all of a sudden just flip the switch for the Phillies. Be covering the Braves as we do, but at the same time, the, the Astros have been the, the villain of baseball for five, six years. Yep. So I don't know. I think it's going to be a really good series. So maybe we just root for baseball, good baseball, good games. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know that we can. I can approach this like a typical World Series and it, say I'm. This pulling is for different that than team. even the Super Bowl when the Patriots and the Eagles were playing each other a few years back. I literally got to within about 15 minutes of kickoff really convinced I wasn't going to watch, but for three and a half hours, you can force your way through it. Mm -hmm. There ain't no forcing your way through six or seven baseball games. No, I'm going to have to gamble on this. That would be like oh, a daily <laughs> fantasy. That's yeah. the I'm only have to way. for me. That's how I'm going to have to, to convince myself. It is myself. usually much easier, though. We talk about opposable thumbs that separates us from the animals, and that's not really a real thing. That's, that's not even accurate. Um, but the white hat, black hat, you are supposed mm -hmm. to be able to say one of the reasons I watch is I'm either rooting for someone or I'll side with I'm rooting against someone. Yep. I think if this was, and this bothered me for a long time, and the SEC, wasn't it, well, if the SEC wins, don't we all win? I was like, is that really a thing? Philadelphia winning, if we were dealing in a college football analogy, wouldn't we be rooting for Philadelphia in that regard? Well, we Why would. doesn't that apply? Why doesn't that apply? They're the ones that officially ended the Braves season. Why would you not want to say... You were beat by the eventual champions. Because they're Philadelphia. They're yeah. Right. We can't in, root for in Philadelphia. The SEC, yeah. the if you're an Ole Miss fan in Florida wins where they're still basically good people, the people in Philadelphia are not. Ding so ding. in the, right. the entire footprint of the SEC, you're dealing with like individuals. They took really good like care of us in the press I mean, box. Did they I not? Love the, Did they I love not? the Philly guys. But Great you know what? cafeteria. Here's, what here's what I'm going to – There's plenty of – Best food in the league. Oh, the best food in the league. I mean, hands down. And free. And free. And that made it even better. Ah, the media loves that. Yes. Anyhow – we we know a lot of great people in Philly. We we spend a lot of time with them throughout the season. But we've Hi known guys. Troy we've known Troy Snickers since he was ten, mm -hmm. you know, or very young oh, yeah. age. So All right. I don't know. I'm, I'm, no, no. Yeah, but I've known John Kincaid since I was about thirty, and so yeah, yeah and go Astros. Yeah. Hold on, That's more but reason to root against him. Bowman's onto something. We keep the championships in the Snicker family. I like that. Now all of a sudden, I found something. I will say one thing though. Like Philly does give you some flashbacks to what the Braves were going, you know, going yeah. on that run a year ago. Like yeah. every time they need a big moment, here's Bryce Harper for one. Every time there's a, a big moment needed, Reese Hoskins has one. Every time a pitcher needs to pitch his way out of a jam, like they're that team. I think Houston's better, but Philly just looks like, I don't know if it's magic carpet or they're just the hot team. They just have everything yeah. working. I, I think my best rooting interest is easily Dusty Baker, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think that's easy. If I'm putting chips on one number. I'm putting them on Dusty. Yeah, I think so, too. Well, and and for what you mentioned with, with Snit's son, with Troy, okay. Hi, and everyone. with Dusty. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Um, Hi, guys. <laughs> having a guy around as, as a baseball lifer, as long as Dusty has been around, I love baseball lifers. Yeah. So to see him finally get over, yeah. I mean, that could be mm -hmm. the final piece of a Hall of Fame managerial career for him. Yeah, he's, already, with this thing. he's a People guy that talks he's already in. Yeah. But, but this is the, do you really want to leave the game after being in it this long, not having a ring? Nobody wants to be on that side of the velvet rope. Mm -hmm. And this guy has earned his way to the other side to get into the VIP room. He He's easily the biggest rooting interest for me. And, and then the other a aspect is you had Hank, you know, had such a great influence on yeah. Snit last year, and he had a significant influence right. on Dusty, too. You know, this is another one that could be, you know, Hank will be – will have uh, played a part in this in some some way, you know, yeah. because of the influence he had on Dusty early in his career. Well, guys, we're looking forward to it. Let me thank the crew here and pass it off to you guys. Thanks to Hoyt, 
Great job, Brandon Joseph. Thanks to Dan Matthews, Justin the Intern. The Braves 2022 recap starts now. Thank you, guys. Here's the funny thing. I've heard this show called The Braves Wrap Up, The mm-hmm. Braves Review, The Braves Wrap Up. Uh, what, what did he just call it? The, the Braves Review? Year in yeah. review. Year, what, 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 what is this? Is this a post-mortem? What is look this? Look into the future. Did yes. you say look yeah. back? I, I was also told a couple of days ago, look to the future. I said, well, that's amazing. If I could do that, I wouldn't be sitting here on a Monday night. <laughs> right. Quite honestly, I'd be I at a game. looked at it as a, a night easier, to get together right? with yeah. some buddies. It is that. Talk is about that what it was? It Hi, guys. That. Hi, guys. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. We're here for the next hour, and uh, we're at the ASW Distillery here in the Battery. Uh, alongside Chris Domino, Mark Bowman, uh, the Rose Amongst Thorns, Kelly Kroll, Ben Ingram here uh, with you. And uh, for the next hour, we're going to look back at the season and everything to come. I, I think that it's, I think the question that they just threw at us is the question that so many Braves fans are asking themselves, who do I pull for in this World Series? And mm-hmm. it takes me back to what, what actually happened for the Braves. How did this how did it come about where the Braves aren't playing and the Phillies are? Because I don't think the the Braves are the only fan base or team asking that question. I think the Mets are, the Dodgers certainly are, the Cardinals might be to a degree. And and I think the 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 big thing that we can agree on is the fact that it is the Phillies who are in the World Series. And I think that comes with a, a certain element of shock value, Chris, don't you? I I wish I liked the Braves going into that series more than I did. I didn't like the Max Fried storyline going into that game. Uh, I knew in Nola and Wheeler, you had two guys, especially when Suarez is the guy on the mound against Fried, and you don't win that game. Mm-hmm. But I, my big takeaway was there were certain teams that needed to play in that first round, and Philadelphia was the perfect example. They checked every box. They went into a hostile St. Louis, hostile in terms of the crowd. It's You're not getting batteries chucked at you. But they needed to win a playoff series. Harper needed to win a playoff series. Riamuto needed to get his feet wet. Gene Segura needed to get his feet wet. Rob Thompson needed to know what the game is. Does it really speed up in that moment? You couldn't have cherry-picked. I, I'll say this. If Philadelphia had won the division, I don't know if they're in the position they're in because I think they needed those two in St. Louis to become the team that we've now seen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you, you, you know, picking up where you said about the Max Fried storyline, I remember I was uh, on 680 that morning of the game one and Fenneran or um, John Michael was one of the two. Someone uh, – said, you know, that his voice, you know, Max's voice doesn't sound right. He's, he sa- still sounds weak, and I think we all knew it. And it, that, that was that's really the whole key to me is the rotation was what was going to set this team apart. This, this team was – this rotation was deeper and stronger than the one that they won the World Series with. And then all of a sudden Max gets sick and Spencer is hurt, and, and all of a sudden you don't have that strength. And then if you just want to even break it down further – you know, first inning, first three innings, they had the bases loaded twice and didn't score either up time. So, yeah, it, 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 can it just be that simple? You know, yes, they could overcome those those th- first three innings, but to to overcome two weekend pitchers, no, that that was going to be impossible to overcome, especially the way the Phillies were playing. Yeah, I think so too. And and Kelly, that first game, I mean, I think about it like this: you know, in games two and three, you're going to get Wheeler, you're you're going to get Nola. Mm-hmm. What what's the best you could expect from that? A split? Well, against those two guys, so that leads you to believe you got to beat, you got to win the games where they're not pitching, mm-hmm. and losing game one. I, I think it could be as simple as that, Mark, where you lose game one, Kelly, and all of a sudden that changes the outlook of the entire series. Yeah, the entire complexion, and I would piggyback exactly what Mark just said about the rotation that you relied on all year long. That was the absolute strength of your ball club. You don't have a healthy Max Freed. You don't have a healthy Spencer Strider. I looked also at what he mentioned, the second part of that being this offense that's so deep and has been. And if it wasn't one through three or four through six, it was seven through nine that was coming up in all these big situations. And I saw, um, we all did, a a Dansby Swanson who just didn't have his best. We saw an Austin Riley who just point blank said it after the series was over. I didn't show up. And in my you know, opinion. I also looked at a Michael Harris who provided this huge lift, whether it was defensively in center field when he first, uh, you know, was brought up or what he was able to do at the plate. And I saw a kid who for as much energy as he did provide the longest season of his life, mm-hmm. I saw in his face. Well, and they- that that's just the, you know, you add those things up and, and the parts of the club that were such a strength just weren't there by the end of the yeah. season. So is it fair, Chris, to say they were out of gas to a degree by the time no, they got I'm there? No, I'm not. I, I don't. I, I think the pitching 
Freed being sick, Strider being out, you got a guy who was in a bullpen mound two times in 26 days. If you're expecting that guy to go be all world, that was that was full. It was fool's gold. Yeah. I mean, it really was. It was you were hoping, and then the first 20s you go, wow, we might get four and five. And then as people were saying that and putting that on social media, kaboom, kaboom. You don't have to be the best team to win a series. You don't. But the Braves' two moments, loaded bases, yeah, bases loaded. You don't do anything in those two. And all of a sudden you go, well, it was no fluke. They pitch better, they hit better. Mm-hmm. And the defense that could have done them in didn't do them in. Right. Mm-hmm. This was easy. Mm-hmm. The Philadelphia Phillies won that series. You can, And no doubt about it, the Braves helped because the offense went away and the pitching wasn't healthy. But Philadelphia won that series. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I don't think there's an element where you could say, well, they blew this or they blew that. You, you got beat. And, and there, there are multiple elements to that, Mark, about why they lost that series, why they were beat. But that's the, that's the thing. I remember we get on the plane after being eliminated, and Joe tells me, he said, well, Part of this, part of part of moving on from this, will be the fact that you didn't blow it in the ninth inning, or there wasn't an error where you blew a, a one-run lead or something like that. They came out, and they just beat you, and and to me, that's what I saw the Braves do to teams last year. I, I, I see a lot of that in the Phillies team. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think this was, in some ways, I look at this as this was a disappointment. You know, and, and uh, there's no other way around it. But. You know, what Snit said last week, you're pissed off, you're disappointed, all that kind of stuff. Those feelings are there. But at the same, same time, unlike a lot of other defending champs, this was somewhat of a new beginning. Yeah. You knew what you had from Acuna. You knew what you had from Austin Riley and, and Ozzy and Max Freed for another year or two at least. But then all of a sudden this year you got Strider and Harris mm-hmm. and William Contreras and, um, you know, Kyle Wright. Now all of a sudden, you know, yeah, th- this team was good enough to win it this year, but at the same time, you walk away, not crushed by anything, saying, "Oh no, we we wasted our one opportunity." You're saying, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna learn from this because we may be even be better next year." Yeah. I asked the question, and I wish I could remember now who after the series that was over. Are you more hungry now because? This should piss you off. I mean, yeah. if anything else, you mentioned disappointment, but this team was built yeah. on paper to what looked like stronger. I know you hate that phrase. I oh. saw you roll your <laughs> eyes just there. I get it. On paper, they were supposed to look even stronger than they were a year ago. And I, I did hear that answer, yes, because we know what we have coming back here and, and everything else. But I'm looking across the way at this series, right, with Houston and the Yankees, and I thought the same thing. I don't know if it's just because Houston's one of the – best constructed teams I've seen in a long time or if you're looking at a team in the Yankees that just got beat and they were that good because I see a little bit of that series having been reflected with the Braves and the Phillies I just didn't see the team I saw all year show up in that series and that's how I feel about the Yankees I don't know if they rain out of gas or what but to me if I were a Yankees fan right now I'd be pretty dang disappointed in that showing against the Astros well I I think they're going to have to answer and I know this is a brave centric thing and eventually, Alex Anthopoulos, what everybody says is, I have to worry about me more than I have to worry about everybody else. I don't believe that this offseason. I think you better be worried about everybody. just gets even stronger. I think you better worry yeah. about it. Steve Cohen's wallet, Dave Dombrowski now having a destination spot after this. Heck, if Miami decides to put some hitters on that team, they're they're dangerous. And the, and the round robin of free agents, I think you really, you got to look at your own. That's what they say in, in the NFL. I got to worry about the division. I got to look within inside me, and then I got to worry about the division. Then I spread out from there. I think the Braves honestly have to worry about everybody because whether it's the best of three is better than one, the best of five with a week off, that might not be good for you. <laughs> There's a trap everywhere if you turn it into a trap. You know how you avoid it? You're Philadelphia, you go win two in St. Louis. Yeah. You know what you do if you're Houston? Not care about anybody and you steamroll right. people and you just go, I don't know what you're worried about. I'm not. All the narratives were completely thrown out the window mm-hmm. with these two teams that are good. The, the Astros had five days off, just like all these other right. division winners. And they hadn't lost a game. So it hasn't bothered them. And then the Phillies get no rest. Not only do they get no rest, they go on the road. On the road. And, and they, they keep winning. In the regular season. Yeah. They, they woke up the in a hotel bed 18 straight right. days. Yeah. And now they're in the World Series. 
And, and it, it's interesting because I, I, I find myself going back to the drawing board of what do you want your team to be when you go into the postseason? Because for the Phillies, I, I, before the season, I said, well, you need to be playing your best baseball. You need to be really hot right now. That wasn't the case for the Phillies. They lost 13 of their final 20 games of the season, and here they are in the World Series. And then I'd say, well, you, you need to be rested. You want to make sure you have all your horses. Well, the Braves had all their horses. So did the Yankees, et cetera. And, and those teams, I mean, the, you had three teams with 100-plus games in the National League that combined for three wins in the postseason. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. It, it flips everything on its head to where I don't know what I, what, what I want my team to be going into the postseason. I still don't know the answer to that because I don't remember – what I would have said about the Braves last year for what all of a sudden flipped for that ball club. Yeah, I, let's go back to Braves fought for 162 games to, to get that, that break right there. And they were able to say, hey, I'm sending my ace to the mound in game one. Well, all of a sudden, three and a third innings later, Max struggles. So you went 162 games fighting for that advantage to have your ace against their number three. Right. And all of a sudden, within a few innings, that you know, or just even – but the fact they didn't come back and win that game like the Astros did. Remember, the Astros had the big right. comeback there right. in game one, yep. too. You know, that, that's the big difference. The and advantage went out the door. The, the, the advantage is gone imme- immediately. Yeah. You know, now even when Kyle comes back the next night, it, it, it pitches great and you win, you still are going to Philly for the next two. Yeah, and it, one at home. Yeah. So, and, and also just the I don't think there effect. is a formula. Seven of the 28 teams in the last 28 years with the best record have won the World Series. Seven of 28? Seven of 28. The Dodgers were the ones. They didn't. So it went from 7 to 27. Dodgers get eliminated. Seven times in the last 28 years, the best record has won the World Series. It's not about that. You can lose two games in a row in June. You can lose two games in a row in August. You can lose two games in a row. You can lose three in a row any time of the year. But do you do it this time of the year? And if you find yourself not having, if you have a home field advantage because the record says you have it, but you give it back one night, everything, I don't buy into anything. There's not one thing. I, I believe this wholeheartedly. What you do in a regular season means nothing. Like nothing. I can't find anybody who can convince me that anything you do during a regular season is going to be the thing you go, but at least I have this. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. Okay, so why are you knocking out playing your best baseball again? Because the Phillies really weren't. And, okay. and before, before this run by them, and this is what makes them unique, I would have said that was the case that's because still the, the Braves were my choice of the ones you sure. Gave. <laughs> well, and, and and I think maybe more times than not, that's that's something that's very tangible. For the Braves last year, that was the case. For the Nationals in 2019, while they finished second in the division, they won eight straight games to finish the season. They were red hot going into the postseason, and they kept that rolling. So maybe that's uh, there's something to that. But this Phillies team wasn't that. They, and they go to. They didn't even get anything going until the ninth inning of game one of the world or the uh, wild card uh, series. If they had, if they kept Joe Girardi for the year, and they did the same thing they did, I don't think they're in the same position mentally as with Rob Thompson. No, mm. he's the most boring, Hands perfect, down. most boring, perfect guy for a group that said we walked around on eggshells. Had they not finished well, but Joe Girardi was there, do you think they're in the World Series no, right no. now? I don't either. No. I think that's what maybe helped them in September. It wasn't an eggshell moment. Sure. Because Joe Girardi got them all puckered. Uh, yeah, Rob Thompson's just like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's just go win another one. <laughs> There's some beauty to that. There There's is. There's a lot of beauty to that. We're just getting cranked up on our Braves wrap-up show as we're on until 7 o'clock tonight. We're coming to you from ASW Distillery, and we're also on the 6-8 of the Fan YouTube channel. So if you want to watch us, you can do that. Go to the 6-8 of the Fan YouTube channel. We will be there. And we're going to 7 o'clock. We're going to step aside right now, continue the conversation when we come back on 6-8 of the Fan. This is the Braves 2022 Wrap-Up Show with Ben Ingram, Chris Domino, Bally's Kelly Crawl, and MLB's Mark Bowman. Live from ASW Distillery in the Battery Atlanta on the home of the Braves, the fan. All right, we're with you to 7 o'clock here on our Braves Wrap-Up Show alongside Chris Domino, Mark Bowman, Kelly Kroll, Ben Ingram here with you, and we're coming to you live from ASW Distillery here in the Battery and also on our uh, YouTube channel, 6 of the Fan YouTube. We are streaming there, and I know we've got some questions from um, our YouTube audience so we'll get to cool. a little bit later over the course of our show. I didn't know show. we were doing that. Yeah, we are. Ask us questions, everybody. <laughs> we, we, we got, I want to put you on the spot. <laughs> put and, you and on all, the spot. And they're all about the future, so that, that, that's, your, <laughs> that's, that's your department. That's your realm. <laughs> <laughs> The crystal ball. Hold on. Let me me see if I can roll my eyes to the back of my head and actually see the future. (laughs) Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> we were talking about what it takes to win in the postseason, and and I had, I, I kept going back to a conversation I had with uh, Joe Castiglione during uh -huh. spring training. He's been the, I think he's been the uh, voice of the Red Sox for 40, 41 years, and we we're playing the Red Sox one of the what about 27 times we mm -hmm. played them at spring training, Bo. <laughs> yeah. And um, he said, he said two things I want to tell you about coming off winning a championship because he's broadcasted four of them. He said number one, your team's going to get off to a slow start. He said every championship team we had in Boston, we got out to a very slow start the following year. So don't be surprised if that happens. That came to be the case. He said the second thing is, he said, every time we won one of these things, and this this is when he said it, it I was like, this kind of sounds cheesy. But looking back on it now, there's there's an element to it that I can't really put my finger on, but seems true. He said, you're going to come to discover that when you win a championship, the year picks you. You don't pick the champion. You don't pick the year. And I thought to myself, that's probably true of a lot of teams because what would the Dodgers say right now? What would the Mets say right now? The Braves, the Yankees. There were times throughout the season where it seemed like those were the t those fan bases felt like this is our year. And not only was it not their year, it might be the year of a team that finished third in their division in the Phillies. So there's an unpredictable nature, Kelly, to this thing. And, and I know you've been a part of uh, – you've covered two teams that won the World Series. Yeah. And, and you probably felt the same way about both of those teams. I did. And it's what – I think probably anyone in that clubhouse that may have the opportunity to win more than one would, would begin to say the same thing. It's just remarkable the things that end up having to go your way. Yeah. That in, an, in a small way, you almost have no control over those little things that go your way. And the inches to the left that this ball happened to get through or or this pitcher just happened to be slightly better on that night or whatever it may be or the opener that was able to go three innings instead of just the two and it's it it's the dylan lee who gets called up it's the right. I, I mean uh who else kyle wright who gets called up out of the bullpen yeah and all of a sudden, that's the group. It's not the group that had four frontline starters the entire season, almost five. Like maybe, maybe even like Soler gets test positive for COVID and Rosario gets and the, a couple extra yes, bats. In the and NLCS. the CS. And then, yeah, yeah it, it, it is the, those little. You never know. Yeah. You never know. And I, that's. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I kept reading all these stories about randomness mm -hmm. coming into this weekend. I was like. Are you not buying that either? No, this is simple math. The more people that you have in it, <laughs> the more ping pong balls in the, in the bucket, the more random the sure. numbers and the outcome can be. So I, I found it kind of amazing that people were like, wow, you know, this is pretty random. It's always been random. But now that we've ramped it up and you added a couple of more teams with an element of more rest. The randomness is is the most given thing mm -hmm. about the baseball postseason right now. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's anything more random than the idea that, oh, it could be them, but it could be them. Here's why them. Here's maybe the, the Dodgers. They got the baby World Series trophy. Yeah. You know, the, for all the games they've won, they've got the 2020 60 game World Series right. trophy. And I'm sorry, it's cheap. Yeah. It's cheap. But they won the 60-game World Series. They did not win the big, right. full-blown trophy. Well, and and to, your, to your point about the randomness, there, there's a reason that the Marlins have two more World Series championships and they have division titles. They've never won a division, yet they've won two World Series because of that. And you could say that that started with division play in 69 because we used to just have two pennant winners. Mm -hmm. And you go, that's, that was the postseason, the World mm -hmm. Series. Here's the Cardinals, the Yankees, the Dodgers. Yeah. And I can tell you that – and. and Okay, who's going to win at the end? There was no randomness. You walked right into the party. Right. You're already there. No. And this I, sport. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go. I am jumping ahead of myself. I'm just curious, but I want you to finish this sport, your thought before I, I mean, I, this sport is, is, you know, lends itself to randomness more than any other. No doubt. You add one more team in the NFL and you get that first round blowout That's like right. the Browns against the Steelers or whatever that was a year or two ago. You right. add two, another team in, in MLB, and you it's get math. exactly what you have. Yeah. yeah, it's just math. The chance to have five and six play in the NLCS. Right. I guess what I wanted to th further that then, just out of curiosity, your thoughts on clearly what the Braves are building here, the, the hope at sustainable success with oh. these guys that Alex are putting, you know, on this club for, for long term. Go back to the Giants three in, what was it, six years, and tell me why they were able to pull that off with the similar core group, mm -hmm. but with this randomness you're talking about also being a factor. H how 
for instance, how did they do it and how did the, the Braves get there, I can, guess is my thought. Yeah, can I, can I ask a question? And yeah. No, because I an just answer? ask a question, <laughs> well, so I need an answer Were first. the Giants ever the best team in baseball the year they won the That's World Series? That's a great— The, the answer is no. The best no. record they had in that run, I think they won 92 games mm -hmm. in maybe the first or second title. The other two, they were an 80 something win right. So do you believe in clutch? Because I have guys tell me there's no such thing. I, again, no, another fallacy. No, in that club I did. The Hunter Pences, the Buster Posey. Here's, the, here's it Madison felt Bumgarner. like there were the clutch. Here, yeah. Here's the brand. Oh. You know, the, you have the guys from beyond the left field wall guys. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Pena won the ALCS MVP. He's a 25-year-old rookie. Bryce Harper won the National League. He's a $300 million guy. Right. There it is in a nutshell. I got mm -hmm. two guys collecting trophies. They couldn't be more disparate as to what the back of the baseball card said or what the expectations were for them coming into the series. Mm -hmm. yeah. So true. Well, and, and on top of that, what you're talking about with the Giants, yeah. and I, I think this goes a long way too. When and, and this doesn't, this isn't automatic. But when you have postseason experience and you've been on that stage multiple times, mm -hmm. you can slow the heart rate down more. No you've been in that situation more. The pressure isn't quite as tangible of a thing, and, and you can perform better in the clutch, like you're talking about, Chris. And for that Giants team, when they were they won three in five years, when they when they won the World Series in twelve or when they went to a seventh game in 14, that team had done it before. So not to say that it wasn't a, a major accomplishment. It was. But I think for a team that had experienced it compared to a team that, perfect example, the 2014 World Series. Royals were there for the first time. They weren't supposed to be there. And they pushed it to a seventh game. Wh which team do you think had a more calmer uh, demeanor in their clubhouse during that series between the Royals and the Giants? I'd say San Francisco because they'd been there multiple times. But, but there's the key to calmness but also the focus, the hunger, the, the the ability to still want it right. equally as much, right? That's the one thing that I do. I will say I didn't feel it so much with this Braves club, but 2017 with the Cubs, I absolutely felt the hangover the whole year. The mm. thought of, like, Joe Madden used to have a phrase, it's really hard to replicate ever that first run that first feeling that first reaching the top it, it's trying to get back there that's the challenge and it, it is i think it goes down not to say the guys don't want to win of course they do but how bad do you want it yeah yeah well you know we we saw a hangover for two months this year we sure right? did we saw the ugliest game the braves have played on whatever that was may 30th there in arizona that was mm. you know they threw to the wrong base they that base running errors and all that instead has the meeting the next morning and and they got on that roll. And, you know, look, that roll wasn't the meeting. It was every bit of Michael Harris and, right. and Strider right. fitting in their spots and all that kind of stuff. But but you do – you go back and look at that April schedule. And it, it had the Reds and it had it, it, so many winnable games there. Nats, in April. Marlins. Yeah, Nats, Marlins. It, it just, you have to wonder, had they gotten off to a better start, would they have maybe gotten to a point where they said, Strider, you're shut down for two weeks. And then things right. you know, happen different. You, you just never know. But yeah. they, that that World Series hangover, whatever it was, those, those first two months, well, the way they played, you know, Cunha getting back, uh, you know, finding the right pieces there in the rotation, getting Harris in center field. Uh, the fact they didn't do that for two months, it it, it didn't allow them to, to – to cruise into the finish line. Of course, they would have cruised in the finish line. People would have said, yeah, you know, they they yeah, rested right. too, yeah, right. too long, exactly. all that kind of so, stuff. I just think they, they would have been better prepared, maybe. Do you want the cautionary tale of baseball right now Which for at least 10 years? Which one would you like years? to tell us? Well, I'm going to tell you. The cautionary tale is just because you think you're good and you're going to be good next year, Yeah. go look at Washington, go look at Chicago, go look at San Francisco when it went away. Go look at San Francisco last year, 107 wins, till we ain't even sniffing the postseason. Right. Uh, the Cubs. Everybody that's won this side of Houston has had that. What do we do? And you can tell me about the Dodgers regular season wins. Go ask Dodgers. Go like if you had a quiet moment with somebody, they go, "Are you guys satisfied with what you've done?" The answer is no. Right. Friedman had to actually tell the world that Dave Roberts is coming back to manage because that's the reality. They haven't done enough with everything they've had in all the regular season games they've won. In the last 10 years, the cautionary tale is just when you think you have sustainability, right. something is going to happen that all of a sudden you look around and you go, what just happened? There's a reason no team has won two of these things consecutively in 22 years. No National League team's done it since the 70s with the Reds. It's not easy to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and I keep going back to my realistic view of this whole thing. And, and you guys tell me what you think about this. I just look back at a five-year period where you won five straight divisions, you got a World Series, and most of your talent 
is locked up for a while where you should be competitive. So what does that give me? Well, maybe that gives me a 10-year run. Or what if I win six or seven division titles? What if I win another pennant? In this day and age of baseball, if you have a run like that, that's extraordinary. And, and it would have been nice to win this year, obviously, if you have a, a team that you feel like you can win the World Series with. But in reality, and, and I don't want to, to dumb down the expectations, but in, in this day and age of baseball, that's a pretty darn good run, is it not? Oh, yeah. I, no doubt. I, like, it's the thought of, I, I'm with you. You always want to win it all. That's the best feeling in the world. But if you get to be a fan that watches next to 100 wins for what you just said, nearly a decade, mm. that's a lot to I don't cheer know, for. Man. That's I a just, lot to I just enjoy. Had the, I just had the general manager of the Dodgers tell me that Dave Roberts is safe because there is a certain point where if you're using the word and it stinks, and it's the reality of the 14 divisions in a row Atlanta Braves. You're not supposed to say only one. It's a world title. But people say only one. The Dodgers are now in the only one territory. Well, the and they're even a step below because of what they're one. No is. doubt. Yeah. And used to because they cheated or whatever it is you think sure. they did. Right. They're in the world of only one, and that one's tainted. So there becomes an expectation where you go ask a Dodger fan if they're happy with what's gone on. On 2020. And there's this, there's this. Um, I don't know if it's a theory, but certainly a narrative that Dave and I love, Doc, don't get me wrong, but that Dave Roberts can't get his teams to perform at their best when they need to. All regular season's great, but what has he done with them, and how has he managed the bullpen, and how has he gone to the bullpen at what point in time with his starters? I, there is certainly that narrative out there, and that's what the fan base is questioning. Well, what not. they're spending for, too. Mets are figuring that out this year. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. So wait, wait, wait. We, we spent 290. Oh, Brian Hoyt's in the building. Your fan club's here. Yeah, that's what I need. How much did he get paid for that's doing that? That's my hype man. He carries the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. If had the Braves, or say, had the Mets won the NL East this year and the Braves beat them, say, in the NLCS, I mean, aren't you? I mean, or, or did you go the reverse? I mean, it get back to the whole division thing. It's great mm -hmm. to win 100 games and mm -hmm. win the division. If both teams did, but it, it really, at the end of the day, you know, there's only one yeah. one championship the, the only, that matters. I mean, the thing that the division, that Mike next the, the I mean, thing that the division <laughs> gives you an opportunity at it, it at least sets. You, if you're winning multiple divisions, you would think more times than not you have a set, you had an opportunity in the postseason where the odds are more in your favor than not. That's about what it gets you more than anything. Yeah. I mean, you get to hang a flag up, and that's great, and it looks awesome. But when you're winning multiple divisions, the best that that gives you is just maybe the better odds come the postseason. I, I do think it also what the Giants did do is going to become more incredible as time goes by. I, right. That's why I was that curious. That is so unicornish. That is such a – who's the pickup in the middle of the year? You know, the Giants became – and, again, they're in – whether it's a rebuild, it, it's crazy. You won 107 games last year, but they're talking about, okay, what are we going to do? Because in the division, San Diego and Los Angeles makes life tougher for you. Are they going to spend the money for Aaron Judge? Whatever it is they're going to do. But if you really look at the Giants, it was the midseason acquisition. It was the guy who wasn't supposed to do something. Yeah, who point. did Pablo Sandoval. <laughs> I mean, Pablo Sandoval turned that into an incredible contract. Yeah. Okay after that, but he never did anything close to that because that's what October is. Right. October's meant for – a boom to come up big. It's meant for a Pena to win an ALCS MVP. You'll make more money off a good October than you will for a six-month season. It, it, See Carlos the, Beltran? Right. See the guys who parlayed in a, you know, a couple of weeks into what it is people think you're going to do more often than not. Yeah. All right, we got a few questions I'm going to throw at you guys, and the first one is uh, for Kelly. Oh, no. uh, Kelly, what do the Braves need to do overall this off season? Well, what do they need to do and what would I like to see them do? Probably a little different, but I, I you got to figure out what you're doing at shortstop. I think that's number one. Um, and whether that's bringing Dansby Swanson back or shifting gears and going in a different direction, and then they have to, I would like to see them go out and get another frontline starter. I think you got to add a starter to the mix. So that'll be my concise mm -hmm. answer. I really, really would like to see them bring Dansby Swanson back. Um, I think it's very feasible. I think this is where he wants to be. I think it makes the most sense uh, just given what the free agency market looks like with short stops. Um, and yeah, that, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and that would cost, I mean, obviously a lot of money if you go do that. But Bowman, it doesn't seem like the list of needs is really all that long. No. I mean, what do you think? No, it, it's, it's not. You know, you've got to figure out what you're doing at shortstop. You know, are you willing to pay uh, Dansby, you know, five and one ten? Five and 120, wherever he's at now. 
you know, are you willing to go there even though he might have been at, you know, four or five at $15 million a piece at the beginning of the year? I think so. Is he willing to take your offer even though it's he's leaving, you know, $30, $40 million on the table? Chipper did many times. Mm-hmm. You know, Dansby wants to win. Um, it, it, he does. He will, he will be in control of his negotiations. Freddie was not. Yes. This is it, Just because it's the same age, it means nothing. These are two completely different people. You know, Dansby will be in control of his uh, negotiations. So wherever Dansby wants to be, um, you know, I, th- I think the Braves will give give him that five and whatever, 110, 120. I think it gets to be a fair – it's going to yeah. be a fair deal. Yeah. It's going to reflect what he did. Yeah. The this season. Wow. Yeah. The one thing you have in here on this payroll, though, you've got Ozuna and you've got Odorizzi. Now, can you get rid of these two guys? There was a they, they tried to trade Ozuna to the Nationals for Corbin. That's just you know, bad contract for bad contract. The Nationals said no. Um, you know that that's the only way you're going to get rid of these kind of contracts. Uh, I'm not as down on uh, this is going to be probably a take Jake? that a lot don't a lot of you listening don't like, but I'm not as down on on Jake as yeah. as some yeah. people are. I think Jake is um, what's what's the word I want? I, I think you can find ways to use him, even if that's not like a starter. I don't know if it's coming out of the bullpen. I don't know if it's like your sixth guy yeah. that at some point you implement. I just I think. If you if if he's on the roster and you can't move him, I think there is something you can do. He's with him. expensive, meh. That's what he is. He's meh. I need the numbers. I'm not going to make it through a year with just five. Mm-hmm. I don't mind having that, but I know what that is, and I know mm-hmm. it's limited. You know, he's almost we the type of guy. Flashes of decency. I'd almost rather put him on ice. I know. I'd almost rather put him on ice. I don't want him pitching for the whole year. He'll just get exposed. There are certain It's never going to happen, but I feel this way about running backs in the NFL. I'd rather give you the first 10 weeks off. Yeah. I'm going to break the glass on you, and here you come. I don't want Jake Odorizzi for close to 28 starts. No. I don't, I don't want him anywhere near that. He is going to be an emergency like Elder, Muller, or anybody else that you might sign. The Charlie thing is, I think, the most talked about this side of Dansby. The $20 million done before the season even got done. That's... Yeah. That's interesting. You just bought your middle to front line guy for twenty million dollars. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to do that again on yeah. a one year deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think we all agree that the the next move after Dansby is something for your rotation. Um, you know, it, it, we'll see what happens with the bullpen because with Kenley, you'd like to add another back end guy. I think you feel really good about where the bullpen is, but it, whether it's Kenley or someone else, can, is, he, he's he, the, he's he your, could be he could be your ninth inning guy. Yeah. And you still have mentor, but you might want another guy that can go into that seventh, eighth, maybe even yeah. ninth inning role. Uh, but to me, that that really ends the list. I mean, a, a lot of the other questions you might have. Well, left, left field, left field is a legitimate question. Sure. And, and, and what are you going to do with that? I mean, you, if, if you're spending money, what do you want to spend money on? Well, I think you might have spent it in Ozuna and Eddie Rosario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure either one are of them you, is really the answer. Are you out on Eddie Rosario being healthy and getting back to what we saw from him? No, I mean, I, I think he could be effective. I, you'd like to see maybe, um, I don't know, I, I think he'd be better. He'll be better than, than he was this year. Maybe if you put Vaughn out there to I was just going to say, I won't be shocked if we see Vaughn yeah. playing in left field in spring yeah. training this year. I, I, that was the next question. question. What happens yeah. in left and what's the future on Vaughn Grissom? Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say Vaughn is plays a, a part in that. And it, it, as an organization, they just have to take a step back and say, look, this kid did everything we needed from him this year. We love him. Or is it fair to have him play X amount of games, especially mm-hmm. when he's the right-handed hitter or part of the platoon? because he's playing even less, mm-hmm. is it fair to put him in that role at the beginning of the year, or should we give him regular bats at AAA? So w- if you add up him and Rosario, it's $9,750,000. So if I think about it that way, am I splitting up and saying I have a $10 million left fielder, but it's two-headed? Mm-hmm. It's like my catcher. I'm not expecting that type of production, but is that what I'm doing? Because Marcelo Zuna, the guy shouldn't have a glove in his locker and at the end of the day, you did try to trade him. I don't know if anybody thinks one less year on the deal. Um, did he rehab it a little bit? Was September good enough to have somebody? You don't want him here, but you probably have to have him here. Mm-hmm. So that was a three-headed monster. He's not really a left fielder, but I'm paying more than I want to for what I think I'm going to get out of those right. three guys. Yeah. And then the other guy who's going to pop up, if, if Solaire opts out, you know, you're going to have fans clamoring saying, 
let's bring him back. Well, oh, I you think know, Peterson more than Solaire. Yeah. Even I, even though Rosario's there with the left-handed bat already, I I, I just think people I think are you gonna, have a better chance getting Solaire back than you do Jacques. But I, but I think the Cavalier thing is going to be just pay Eddie. I don't care. Right. I want Peterson, and I'm not telling you that it's fantasy, and I'm not telling yeah. you you just eat contracts and you you, know, you you rip up the contract and eat it like a salad. But a fan base will tell you. I know which guy I want, mm-hmm. and money be damned. Well, yeah. and and there's what two years left for Solaire on his current deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and Jock's a free agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's two That's for twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Solaire is two for twenty four. Yeah, so Peters, uh, next ex- year is his last year on the deal. Who's that? Because this was his first for Georgie for Solaire, right? Three years, thirty six million. Year? Not two. Peterson years. did one for six. Okay. Right. Rosario did two for eighteen. So out oh, of you're, all the deals, right. value was because Solaire broke down and didn't do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Peterson was the value deal at one for $6 million. Can yeah. you – all right, if, if we're judging on what you need for opening day, I mean, obviously shortstop, you got to have a shortstop. Right. Right? Starting pitching would be nice. Can you can you go with what you have to the trade deadline? In other words, would you would you say that left field is as big a need that you have to have it done for opening day? Because I think you could hold off till yeah, trade deadline. Now, that part I agree with you. Uh, no doubt. Of, and I don't even know regardless what flexibility what you have. Right. The Mets do, and regardless of what – Philly does. You're fine with starting this club the way it is. No, I, I'd like to. I'd like to find an extra 180 million dollars on this <laughs> table and go do what I really want to do. But as much as they spent, and look, Terry McGurk said we're aiming to be a top, <laughs> top five. five. I yep. give them credit for yeah. just even putting that out. They there should look at this place. Where are we again? We're in the battery at the ASW Thank Distillery. You. you see what I did <laughs> yeah. there? That was me dropping in your plug. We're, uh, we're showing, and it's popping. We're showing flashes of decency down here, no, as you kidding. said. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we're we're going to show flashes of decency for 18 more minutes I as do, uh, we're taking it up to 7 o'clock. Can go we ahead. go back to Vaughn for a second? Yeah. So I think you bring up such a good point in, in a player's development, right, at that age. Mm-hmm. And do you yeah. want him getting consistent at bats, or are you willing to put him in left field? Yeah. This is a kid that looked at me in Miami um, towards the you know, after they had clinched, and then he knew he was going to get a shot after Dansby's first A-B to come in and play shortstop. And he goes, I feel so much more comfortable when I'm at short. Yeah. Now, he can play second, and he'll play wherever they put him. Of course, he just wants to play. But how fair is that, or what should that look like when you think, okay, here's Von Grissom in our club. This is what we want his trajectory to look like. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the shortstop element, I – and I th- think he could play shortstop. And if I'm the Braves, I'm touting say he can play shortstop. Mm-hmm. You know, of just course. for that, yeah. that from the Dansby angle. Oh yeah, we got somebody already. You know, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I think everybody, you know, I think it, it, it's around the baseball world. He's not. A, he's not an everyday shortstop right I'll now. I'll tell you he's where he is comfortable. Yeah. Is in the big leagues. Yeah. And if he wants to be in the big leagues, he's probably playing some exactly. other position other than shortstop. Yeah. Oh yeah, that glove is that the one you use out in left field? <laughs> right. I'll get one of those. Do I have to buy it myself? No, son. We give them to you here in the big leagues. Well, you heard the bat story. He's using his bats from AAA for a good two weeks before right. Darno picks up on it and is like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like, have Dansby go order you some bats today, kid. Like, it took a second for him to figure it out, but yeah. you're right. He, he doesn't have any problem on yeah, that he, stage. He's Moonlight Graham getting picked up on the side of the road. Like, we're going to go else. a place where we play baseball all the time. All right, we're going to step aside. We'll have one more break to work in, and uh, we'll do that right now. You're listening to the 2022 Braves Wrap-Up oh. Show. This is the Braves 2022 Wrap-Up Show with Ben Ingram, Chris Domino, Bally's Kelly Crawl, and MLB's Mark Bowman. Live from ASW Distillery in the Battery Atlanta on the home of the Braves, the fan. All right, it is our final segment here on our Braves wrap-up show. Yeah. And um, <laughs> here till 7 o'clock from the ASW Distillery here in the Battery, which is a great facility. This is the first time I've had the opportunity to come in here. So this has been awesome to come in here and check it out and meet some of the You're folks here. You're a bourbon guy, right? Yeah, yeah that's especially this time of year. Yeah. So I don't you? know. I might stay around for How a while. How much did Ben drink at, on Saturday night? I have been watching? told I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> Just kidding. Saturday night. Oh. Got it. Oh, yeah. After, yeah. After yep. LSU. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> all of it. All of it. all of it. Happy drinking or pissed off drinking? Which one do you find yourself going to the bottle a little bit more? <laughs> Happy. Happy drinking. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people yeah. I know go pissed off. I know. Yeah. That's you just not me. You should I just go move on to something else if I'm mad. You should keep better friends around you. <laughs> Happy. I'll flip on Not to the next station. Downers. You can't text the next friend, yeah. whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> on to other things. Oh, so let's move on. Yes. <laughs> Good for you. I, I can move on with the best of them. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> 
It's <laughs> <laughs> my gift and my curse. Oh, they right. move on and grow. Yeah, Are exactly. Are we still talking about sports? <laughs> yes. No. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in our final few moments, I know we have a few other questions from uh, our YouTube audience, which is very cool. We have uh, three cameras set up Thanks here. Thanks so for we're tuning on in our, tonight, guys. Our 6-8 uh, of the Fan YouTube channel, so this has been a whole lot of fun. But um, th from, from each of you individually, I'd love to get your opinion on – what you'll remember from this 2022 season and what you think the goal is ultimately for this team through the offseason, where they need to be. We'll start with you, Bo. I, I think I'm going to remember Strider and, and Harris. I mean, I, I don't think there have been any, and I'm not saying a, a rookie duo, I'm saying any rookies that have been as impactful for the Braves since Chipper Jones, these two guys. And that includes, you know, Craig Kimbrell, Freddie Freeman, uh, Jason Hayward, all these guys. What, what Michael did to right. that uh, that outfield in that lineup uh and just uh, how um he just fit fit in that clubhouse right away it, um i think that that's what i'm going to remember as much about this season as anything and just how strider just continued to prove us wrong you know mm -hmm. nah he's not ready for the opening day roster ah uh, maybe he's a maybe he's a seventh inning guy uh maybe yeah maybe he shouldn't be a starter uh yeah maybe he's a future Cy Young Award candidate. I mean, this you get the kid, season, your yeah, third best guy. Yeah, this kid, he, he just, and you know, he's pitched, what, 61 innings at Clemson? Right. Uh, what, Tommy pitches, John. Tommy John. He's got pitches last year and comes up here and, and does things we have not seen a Braves rookie do. You did, know, I mean, those of us, it? other than Schultz, Schultz was covering the team in the 1800s. But other than that, <laughs> did you find Hi, it Jeff. interesting? Oh, Jeffrey. <laughs> did you find it interesting that there was no over-the-top dynacism with those guys there was nothing yeah. like that was the other part of it those guys michael harris didn't want to talk yeah. spencer strider didn't want to talk but you saw little glimpses when strider comes in with the money mike t-shirt you go oh there's something about him he's right. just not going to give it to you every day the guy said a perfect game is 27 pitches 27 outs I said, what kind of freak is this guy <laughs> but it was different than what you think of what a lot of young guys who explode on the scene and actually make a difference yeah they didn't have those personalities mm -hmm. on top. i like you know there was one Strider basically, I loved when, when he basically just threw it back at us. And, you know, in the late July when Dave said something like, uh, you know, are you, how are you feeling? And I, it's just that simple. And, and Strider knew exactly where we were going with the yeah. question. Smart and he kid. said, he's, you know, I'm glad, you know, all you guys are innings experts yeah. and you know exactly when I'm going to get tired. And, all. and I, I loved it. I was like, mm -hmm. this kid, you know, he's talented, he's confident, Think he's got some speak edge to him. And, and that's going to carry him a long yeah. way. That's what I'll remember. Not only the impact they had, but just the confidence that the two slash three of them walked in that clubhouse with. And that, I think that's what all their teammates would say, too, is that, yeah, you come up and you want to believe, want to believe you belong on that stage. These guys believed they belonged on that stage, and there wasn't ever that moment that you saw them overwhelmed in and whatever. I think for me, too, one thing that I'll remember about this season, just because I'm a softie at heart, is um, the milestones for Snit. The the 500th win, for me, that was a post-game interview that I got a, a, a text from Ronnie that was a video of his grandsons congratulating him that I got to show him live as we did the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite interviews I've got to do just because of how personable it was um and you know he's never a hundred win season and then the 20 game winner 21 with kyle wright like no it wasn't the top of the mountain for him this year but this is a year because of all those those moments that i think he'll remember fondly mm -hmm. and and because we get to be there and sort of witness those for somebody right. that we we care a lot about I, that that to me is something i'll always take away as a, a very special part to the year. I, I, you don't know where it's going to come from. Michael Harris, where does it right. come from? Strider, where does it come from? Kyle Wright, one of 21 games, mm -hmm. where does it come from? That happens across baseball. Baseball is littered with those stories. But to see it work to the level of winning 100 games in an environment where you're supposed to win. Now, I, I, I've often said it's a little bit easier to win when the spotlight isn't hot. It's a little bit easier to be a little bit better when they're not expecting much from you. Well, we're playing guys, and you go, Kyle Wright, isn't this the 26-year-old guy? Where the hell has he been? What's taking him so long? <laughs> Boom, here it is. Michael Harris, that guy doesn't play. Boom. Spencer Strider, he's the guy with the big legs and the mustache. You go, yeah, but he's got a little bit more than that. In an environment where you're supposed to win. So I, I just love the fact that this team exhibited. You don't know where it's going to come from. You're going to need every bit of it. And then you kind of hope it doesn't get shut down the way that it did. 
but but teams just as good as this, if not better, have gotten shut down in October. And that might be the most unique thing about our game, if, comparing it to other games. If I'm in the NFL, I can throw it to my best receiver every play. I can pass the ball to my leading right. scorer in, in, in basketball every play. In baseball, you need guys to come out of the woodwork and play at a level that you didn't expect. And, man, they had some guys who did that this season. T to your point, Bo, where, where those two guys, I think, undoubtedly will be one and two in the rookie of the year voting, uh, you you know you need Dansby to do Dansby yeah. things and Austin Riley, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But Kyle Wright winning 21 games. What, what did he won? Two before in all his seasons yeah. combined? Yeah. And he goes out there and he wins 21 ball games. Um, I think the, 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 two, the two things I'll take the most away from this season, number one, the 14-game winning streak was awesome. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden it's like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good to, yeah, yeah. Uh, they show now we can, we can go on with our summer and have high expectations. And number two, and, and maybe this ended up being a bad thing. I don't know. We got so fixated on this incredible historic race with catching the Mets, and they finally did. And and I personally felt like when they did that, that was their springboard, and they're going to go deep into the postseason. Didn't happen that way, unfortunately. But it, this was a fun race to be a part of every single day, checking what they did. What did you do? What's it look like? What's their schedule going to be like in September compared to how difficult yours is? And finally, getting them on the on the you know last week of the season. I thought that was that was so much fun to be in the middle of a race like that. And um, I think those are the things that I'll take away from 2020. Do you guys also believe that player empowerment is coming? You talked about Dansby. He's in charge of this, and I agree with that. I think player empowerment. I think for a long time, agents led players by the nose. I think they said, ah, not a bill of goods. You're a grown man. You better figure out who works for who. But I think there was a player empowerment that's going on around baseball where I'll do the deal. I'm going to yeah. tell you what's you important. You know what? Tell me if I don't mean to step on your toes, but I think it's because guys talk to each other about it more than they ever used to. I think they're more willing, maybe not numbers, but, but – Take the reins of your career. This is your career. Kyle Wright, I'm sorry, but when they send you down there, you decide who you want to be. Not who the numbers guys are telling you you should be, how many pitches you should be pitching of this one or that one. You decide your career. When you got the Col I know people don't want to hear Cole Hamels, but when you got him in this clubhouse telling some of these guys in the Charlie Mortons the same thing, like at some point I had to, Charlie Morton, Pittsburgh, wherever, take it my career in my own hands and decide who I was going to be. I think those conversations are happening more. And one of the things I was going to say, we're really privy to, I know you got to see it on the road with me that I thought made this team really special. And I'll always remember the chemistry around it is when you see deal after deal being offered by Alex and you see that whole club in the back of the room watching guys sit and talk to us about what this means to them and you see them clinch the division and we're watching all of them at the hotel celebrate together well after hours, not going to a club in Miami, just at the hotel together. Just, just that was special about this club. And I do believe those conversations are being had now. Yeah, they did. Two things you guys said about Kyle Wright. It is, you know, 21 win season. He, he completed five innings in five of 14 starts entering this year. Yeah. I mm. mean, that's incredible. Yeah. And, and as you said, taking control of his career, you know, we, we saw, we've heard a lot about, you know, Alex Tammon's names come up here with Joe Madden, you know, stuff. Um, Fantastic. And it's not, it's not all Alex Tammon, but it, he, he, played, a, he yeah. played a part in this with, 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 you go back and look at how many times Kyle was throwing a slider there in 2020, and now it's not even part of his repertoire. Mm -hmm. And I and, and I'm, I use Alex Tam because he was the guy on the road and delivering the information. It's just sometimes you just have to go find out who. Well, they're you not are. all created equally. Yeah. 25 year old shortstop in Houston, 26 year old guy here in Atlanta. We got to stop talking about how they're all supposed to move along at the same level and same pace. Right. Kyle Wright took he took nut shots. I mean, we're trying to break them down, and why do, why do you care? You know, you drafted me this high. Some guys handle it better than others, and that's that's a sign of maturity. Right. You know, this does seem to be a, a pretty mature group, too. It does. Well, and, and hopefully a lot to build on, and hopefully this time make sure we're doing a, another championship show. Here's to that. In November. Yeah, in November. Yeah. All right, that'll wrap things up for us. Thanks, as always, for being out there. For Chris Domino, Mark Bowman, Kelly Kroll, I'm Ben Ingram. We appreciate you tuning in here on 6 of the Fan. Thanks, guys.